Wind's blowing like heck today. I'm just getting prepped and ready to go to uh, change the oil and filter in the truck because it's been a year. Thank God I don't drive it that much. It really cost me a fortune if I had to change it <laughs> more than once a year. see here if I tilt the camera down far enough I got my two buckets of oil so 10 gallons of oil got my tools there's my new filter getting ready to change out the oil filter the old one you can see it right there zoom in maybe you can see the hours on there or the miles I should say Put that one on at 34,720 miles and today it's got 37,590. I think that was going to be a 5, but it might be a 7. Anyway, miles as of today. So in the last year I almost drove it 3,000 miles. So thank God I don't drive it more than that. <laughs> I'm running a conventional style oil over here. Um, this is the Luca CK4, in case you're wondering. Um, switched to this because I was using a Delco and uh, I was, because it sits so much, it, the, the starts just felt rougher than they had to be. So I switched to this stuff. First time my first thing I did was I added um, Lucas oil conditioner to the oil and that helped a lot. And then I found this stuff here at our local bomb gars and um, tried that out. And cold starts are way better than they used to be. So I've been happy with it. I wonder what it is. I mean, all this time I, I, I like watching mid, Midwest equipment. Um, they sell a lot of these trucks. and I wonder why it is they always take off all the rubber. I mean, I've got my fenders still attached here. Well, the, the, the removable ones are out right now because I'm working on it. But they take all this rubber stuff off the side. I mean, look how dirty that stuff is. Without those things there, that's what the engine's gonna look like. It's got enough problems. Hey, look, I got a twink underneath the intake manifold. Wonder how that got there. <laughs> anyway, yeah, let's see. There's, there's the oil pan bolt. Can you see it? Uh, the black hole right there. That's where the I drain the oil on this vehicle. As you can tell, it makes a mess because it has to pour all over that stuff down below it. But the good news is, is I can put the extension on an air ratchet and, or impact and unscrew it from back here and, instead of being underneath it. And now we've got this nice new oil pan from um, Northern Tool. And it uh, should be easier to catch it. And, It'll hold it all. I have been doing this with a five gallon bucket and or two five gallon buckets and swapping them halfway through. That's kind of a messy experience. I got my industrial sized oil filter wrench there too. So anyway. Try not to bore you to death with countless footage of just me yanking on this and just kind of do some stops and starts here and there. In case you're wondering, oil's definitely ready to be changed. Nice, got lots of soot in it. That's also what happens when you don't drive it enough. Get sitted up pretty good. But yeah, the oil filter's just loose enough it's leaking. And that's what's coming off. Vast majority of it is hitting 
the wheel pan. So I'm going to stop here and continue on in a second, but uh, yeah, there we are. Stage one complete. Get down here, you can see the. Okay. Still getting used to this camera. Here's where the oil filter went. And I'm just going to let it drain down a little bit and wipe it down with a clean rag. Certainly not that rag. And uh, got a wire hanging back there. It's just kind of rusting on something. It's got a little plug in it. Don't know what it's for exactly. But I'm thinking I need to cable tie that up so it's not just draped over the metal and possibly chafing. Anyway work on that for the next couple minutes while that finishes draining down but there you go don't know if everybody does this but i definitely believe in pre-filling a filter especially when it's on a remote mount like that there's a lot of hose in there it takes a bit for the hose to charge up and flush the filter through so i think it's probably a good idea to minimize the amount of air bubble in there Anyway, just thought I'd mention that as I go. Very grateful for my inherited oil pump from my uh, father-in-law. It may be hand pumped, but fits the bucket pretty good, clamps on, and it makes it so much easier. So, anyway, it's also a two-handed operation with a rounded bottom filter, so I gotta <laughs> let go now. That's going to do it for now. Oh yeah, it's heavy now. Whip that gasket up a little bit. <sighs> Always a workout for somebody that doesn't do much like me. <clears throat> Tell I don't do much handwriting because it sucks. But there it is oil filter in place. Oil filter mostly drained out. Next process drain the oil from the engine. Blah. Well, now we're getting ready for job two, or stage three, or however you want to categorize it. This is the part where we drain the engine oil out. And pan's in place. Yes, I'm up parked on a hill, but it'll work. The fun part's gonna be wrenching this thing out, as per usual. splatter my camera with oil. <laughs> yeah, 
I can semi sort of see what's going on. See if we can have a controlled gusher here. It's gonna get noisy. Air tool time. at this point that I tried to go a hand there a little closer <laughs> kind of got to hold the plug in there so I get a steady stream. Or I have a real mess. <laughs> Takes a while. Especially at this rate. Let's see if I can go a little faster. Fast. Need to catch up on the pan lure a little bit. Getting close to <laughs> running over the top. I think we're getting to the end here. Okay, I can pull the plug out. I won't bore you with the rest of the draining process. Well, we're gonna do something I probably don't have to do. I'm gonna clean this up a little better. There's hardly any metal on the magnet. About the same as it was last time. Some of it I didn't clean out before, so this time I'm gonna do a little better job of cleaning out around the edges. And I'm gonna degrease it and wire brush it down because it's getting kind of rusty looking and I've got some cat yellow paint over here somewhere I'm gonna give it a little touch up so it looks a little nicer yeah waste of time I know anyway <laughs> seems like a thing to do though there it is bright and yellow fresh paint on it cleaned it up wire brushed it down and bathed it in some alcohol and dried it off and Put some good old fashioned rust oleum cat yellow tractor paint on it. Ain't gonna be perfect, but <clears throat> you know, where it's at, nobody's gonna see it but me, and I wanna see it yellow. So sort of rust red, or primer red as it may be, or something. <laughs> anyway. Now comes the fun part. This bucket was probably a gallon over five gallons because I poured the last bit of the last bucket into it. And, uh, I'll have to pump the entire contents out of this one, open the next bucket, drop whatever's left, whatever can't be pumped out into that, and pump the entirety of the next bucket in there to get it to fill it up. Since I'm on an incline, I don't quite want to get it all the way to the full, but because the dipstick's more towards the front of the engine, so you can kind of see. If it let me zoom in here. 
wasn't yet. Okay, I'm gonna get used to this camera one day. But I got the dipstick out right now, that's that hole there, and of course this is oil fill. And uh, here, I'm not gonna record this because it's boring as heck. It takes forever. But I did get the dipstick in it, or the oil plug in. I better show you that since it's bright yellow now. And I haven't done any cleaning back here yet, so there's a lot of oil on all the components. But I'm sure you can see the bright yellow cap there. <laughs> and the buckets right there. And I'm going to have to hit this little brake cleaner, I think, and, and then some soapy water. Anyway, there we go. Yesterday we made a started making a video and changing the oil in the truck on the truck and one of the things we did as we were cleaning up is uh, we changed the hub oil in the front axle and it was readily apparent that I have waited too long to change the oil in the axles because they were quite dirty now you can see there the these have a gear reduction planetary hub and uh, this is the fill position i put fresh oil in there until it came out of there um hope that got on camera uh but the stuff that came out was pretty nasty and black and i was surprised um so trying out something that's new product for me uh lucas makes a hub oil and I put that in there um, to uh, uh, see how it works. And one thing I learned about it is that when it's been sitting in the basement at 50 some degrees, it's uh, really slow pouring. But so I got my next two jugs out. I'm going to do these two mid, mid axles. And what I'm planning on doing is I'm going to jack, jack each one of these wheels up off the ground. And I'm going to put the, uh, don't set that, carry that around with me. I'm going to put the carrying rods that go right here and allow you to basically carry this axle off the ground. So I have two rods, but I'm only going to use one because I'm going to jack up one side, put the rod in, let it down. And if this works as planned, then I'll jack up the other side and just leave it on the jack. And that'll give me, with the brakes off, the ability to roll this forward and back a little bit so I can line up the drain holes so that I can drain all the fluid out of it. And uh, in theory, then turn them like I showed you the ones on the front where I could fill it. And then I'll battle through the process of putting the uh, hub oil in there and topping it off with gear loop. So, at any rate, it's a process. Um, a lot of the tools I use are up in here uh, on the toolbox in the back, and uh, that's where I got my rods at. And uh, yeah, this is the other side. Um, Got to drag the air hose out here so I can make it a little easier on my self because I'm not very good at doing this all the time and of course I got to be quick because the dogs are expecting a walk today down by the lake if they don't get it they're going to be miserable all week long anyway that's what I got to start with plan A is not going to work at all okay so now we need to move the truck off to plan B Over your leg, babe. Okay. Hopefully today goes easier than yesterday's. Now that we know, kind of know what we're doing a little better. It kind of sucks that we need to spend some time with our limp home rods to get
get them so that the nuts will thread onto them. Because <laughs> the, you know, the original plan this morning was to jack up the one tire, put the limp home rod on it, and then jack up the other side so that the axle would be allow us to turn it. But if I can't get the retaining nuts on the limp home rod, um, it's not going to hold it up. <laughs> the vehicle. Now we're trying to find all our tools that we laid out earlier. <laughs> Don't you need to jack it up? Oh, I suppose not. It's in the right spot, isn't it? That's why we moved it there. that. I just didn't realize you were that, not that big. I, I, I am sorry. We did the front ones yesterday. We jacked it up and we moved, we rotated the tires. So um, green bucket. I'm just opening them first. Okay. Because there's no sense in going any further if you can't get them broke loose. That's true. <laughs> that is true. So, that was stage one. That would be stage two. Yeah. Off so that they don't get all greasy. <laughs> Hand wash gloves don't very well. There's the other ones. Those are my non greasy gloves. Yeah, we might need to do this. Yep. Oh, looks like I gotta stand in the right spot when starting to catch it. Right now, they're on really light because there's no air getting out. Oh, okay. Oh, there we go. Uh, I'd be more worried about the pan. It's wobbly. <laughs> I'll just come over here and stand. How's that? Well, quit shuffling your feet because you're kicking leaves up and it's blowing all over over here. <laughs> I'm trying not to shuffle anyway. Of course, it doesn't help with the wind blowing. Worst part is about this is the weight game. Because as you can see, it's still running. Very, very lightly. Okay, now we need to go forward. That was a good thing.
too much damn. <laughs> this is such a messy job. Going a lot faster than squeezing that up. Yeah, especially when it's cold. Definitely. Cold front's getting warmed up over there on the truck. Unfortunately, if you put a hole in this one, it would just leak out the bottom. Well, like you did the other one. This is the one that I refer to the truck just in case I need something. I know. So, That's why I said. I can't do that with this one unless I want to go buy a new one.
bottom. The other one's yeah. We're good. We're right here and right here. Next time we'll have to air up. Yeah. <laughs> That's the first step. Make sure you can actually get them out. Then worry about draining it. Oh, oh no! Greasy fingers. Greasy container. <laughs> Greasy everything. Yep. Okay. Step sliding away. Got it. Okay. okay. Now we let it drain. This one looks a little darker than the last one. So. This is the drive wheel. Hmm. It's kind of so it gets like a lot more work on it. This looks like the front ones we did yesterday. Yeah. I don't know about the front ones because it seemed like there's a lot less grease in them. I know. That makes me worry about them. We put a heck of a lot of grease into them though. Yes, we did now, but they were a little. Shy of being full before. Be a little high, a little more this way than. Yeah, well, because levels. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so oh. yeah, that's not good. Okay. Alrighty. So. Get another hose. Thank you. All right. Don't cut yourself. Oh, that wasn't good. So we're only nine minutes left to record on the SD card, though. Oh. <laughs> so now we're on the other side. <laughs> Get ready. These wheels are almost insane. Isn't that amazing? See it right here? <laughs> that one and that one. Almost in sync. <laughs> hmm. Well, this is boring, so we'll stop it and pick up a little bit later. So, you can see that there. This is what we put in it. It says down there at the bottom, hub oil is overworked and often neglected. Yeah, that's true. Love it. Lucas Hub Oil is heavy-duty blend of special oils and additives designed to compensate for these problems. So we're going to see what happens. I only had enough to do uh, four out of six hubs. So the middle hubs have just straight gear lube in them. And the front and rear hubs, which get most of the drive power anyway, under normal conditions, have the gear lube in them, so, or the Lucas Hub Oil in them. We'll see if they run lower temperature comparatively. That would be the ultimate sign that it's working good is if we take a hub uh, reading off the temperature after driving it for a while and that hub is hotter than this hub then we know that lucas stuff is good and it was worth the effort i expect that it probably won't matter but we'll see Are you happy, hero? <laughs> Gonna get that cattail. <laughs> She's been getting it left and right. Apparently something about it bugs her.
Whatever it is, it bugs him too. What's that? 